So hi, everyone. Um, today I'll be presenting a paper um, on software specific to Visium HD, really. Um, it's sort of a pipeline for multiple analysis steps um, on Visium HD data. And it was from a preprint that came out pretty recently this year. Um, so yeah, I'll be walking through this paper. Um, so this is actually the first main figure, the, the only main figure. Um, but this tries to outline like the, the whole process that this NX software is um, is doing. So um, number one is not really a step. Um, you just basically start with um, to, like Visium HD data from um, which where you have um, a matrix. Like the expression data is a matrix um, where the, the columns are um, bins. Um, so a lot like spots and Visium standard. Um, Actually, yeah, yeah, normally it's, I guess, in this figure, they, they transposed it. But in any case, it's bins by genes. Um, so you have a lot of different genes that are um, being measured across um, a lot of spatial area measured in these bins. Um, so the first really step that this pipeline does is the cell segmentation step. Um, so they do that in, in this... Um, like a lot of segmentation techniques, they break the the image up into um, into patches, really, um, and then they use um, Stardust, um, which is a lot like uh, I'll, I'll be discussing sort of the similarities to another paper that does some of the same stuff called bin to cell, um, and so at, at points I'll compare it to that. And bin to cell is another method that does cell segmentation and also uses Stardust, so that's kind of interesting. They're both using this. Um, unit based um, machine learning approach for segmentation. Um, and so once you segment the cells on these on the full resolution images, um, then you can the goal is that instead of having these bins that are in this grid like format, um, you really want individual cells that are spatially resolved. Um, so the next step is to sort of um, assign these bill, bins, um, or assign actually the expression from bins, not always the entire bin, which I'll get into, um, assign them to cells so that you end up with this matrix of um, genes by cells. So that's that's your expression matrix at the end. Um, so now you have a spatially resolved cells instead of just um, bins in the grid that format. Um, so I think that's one of the main, I would argue that's one of the main contributions of this um, this paper is it really focuses on that third step three here. Um, but it does provide um, wrappers in the step four for um, mm -hmm. cell type inference. So trying to determine what cell type each of these cells is once you have them. Um, and so they provide a few different um, options here, a few different tools for, um, for calling cell types, which they discuss, and I'll discuss a little bit later. Um, and then once you have that, there's a lot of downstream analysis you can do. So this is a um, this is a Python based tool. So they, I think naturally they discuss like using SquidPy, which is a common um, common package for analysis in Python. Um, but in theory, you could, if you wanted, you could bring this into R and use Bioconductor pack packages or really whatever you want. Um, so it's not really a step that's provided by the pipeline, but it's. Um, they're just saying like, here's what you can do with the data once you you run our pipeline. Um, so there's actually a, a lot of different methods that they discuss um, for this bin to cell assignment. Um, so they discuss like, um, like they all really differ based on how they handle uh, bins that cover multiple cells. Uh, I probably should have had a, maybe a little graphic now that I'm thinking about it for um, this situation. But basically, the, the bins are this square grid. And you can imagine that um, it's possible for a bin to cover multiple cells if you're looking at the segmentations. Um, sort of the edges of um, the cells are touching sort of maybe in the center of the bin or something like that. Um, so in that case, they want a smart method to handle that. Um, so they, they say that um, first, the first method is the naive method, is what they call it. Um, that just entirely drops bins that covers multiple cells. So the majority of bins are probably going to cover only one cell in many cases. Um, and 
the very simplest way to deal with this would just be ignoring bins that cover multiple cells, which isn't great, but they say like that's the simplest approach and they use that sort of as a reference. Um, and they compare that to bin to cell, which I don't, bin to cell actually, the paper wasn't super clear on how, um, um, what happens if there's segmentations that are overlapping. Um, but in any case, they, they say that that's similar to bin to cell. Um, then they discuss these three other methods that are supposed to be sort of advancements or improvements upon um, just that naive approach. Um, so the first one would be weight by area is what they call it. Um, and so in the case where you have multiple cells, um, basically you look at the area that the, each, each cell covers on, on the bin in the case of overlaps. Um, not overlaps, but in case of having cells in the same bin. Um, and then you simply assign the expression in proportion to the area that each cell covers. So a, a cell that's covering more of the bin gets more, more of the expression. You do that equally for every gene. Um, so it's, it's taking the total expression, um, sort of ignorant to, or agnostic to the, um, like the transcript makeup of each cell, I guess. Um, so I guess that gets to the next, um, the next assignment method that they call weight by transcript. Um, so they're arguing here, basically the idea is that um, cells can have different um, transcript expression profiles, of course. Um, and so if you do the weight by area method, you're just assigning um, all transcripts equally. Um, you're dividing them up equally between cells and just doing a global sort of coefficient. Um, Whereas the weight by transcript um, actually takes a look at, I'm not going to go into the math. I think it's easier to understand from a conceptual high level um, understanding, which is that um, basically it's looking at the expression profile of each cell that's overlapping or in a, um, in a bin with multiple cells. Um, and then it's distributing the trans each transcript differently based on like what the expression profile looks like from each cell. So it's supposed to be like a bit of a more informed more accurate way to distribute expression um, that takes advantage of the fact that each cell looks different in terms of expression um, profile. Um, so that gets us to the last method that they discuss, um, weight by cluster. Um, and so they argue that like weight by transcript in theory is like a well-informed way to do it, but in uh, in practice, the data is really sparse, so you can run into situations where um, there's really just not enough information um, from, if you're looking at, um, like, given one bin, you might actually be missing genes that are part of the expression profile of um, the cells that make up the bin. Um, and so just given the sparsity, you can, there's not really enough information to know how to distribute the transcripts perfectly in many cases. Um, if you had sort of many bins, maybe it would be easier. Um, but given to try to overcome that sparsity, they, they developed the weight by cluster method. So instead of distributing the transcripts according to the cells that make up the, the bin, um, they actually do a clustering step and then they um, look at the expression profile of um, the cells, like the cluster that the cell belongs to. Um, so that's sort of, a, in a way, you're sort of incorporating information from across the entire um, entire section instead of just that one cell, which may be a little bit more sparse in terms of the information. Um, so uh, actually, the, the method that they implement by default in the package is weight by area. Um, and there's a few different reasons. Um, I'll go into sort of the performance metrics that they evaluated, and that, that was one reason for making that the default. Um, so I guess next, before, before looking at the, the performance evaluation of each of those methods, um, we need to talk about the data sets that they used. Um, so this is, of course, this is software for VisiumHD, um, but they used, they started with, the first data set they started with was a Xenium data set that they sort of artificially um, tried to 
Um, I mean, they go more into the methods about how this works, but they sort of partition the expression into the grid that would be that Prism HD would use. Um, so that's a human colorectal uh, cancer sample. Um, and later they'll, um, this figure shows a um, cell types annotated by an expert pathologist. Uh, and then now that will be used later to evaluate um, some of these methods um, in the pipeline as a whole. Um, so that's, that's shown in this figure, um, but not shown is um, the other synthetic things that they used that was based in Seekfish Plus, which I'm not too familiar with, but this was a math, mass small intestine sample. And similarly, they have like pathologists um, annotated cell types and that will be used later. But, um, but yeah, so the constructed Visium HD data sets where they know where the cell type, the actual cells are supposed to be based on this ground truth. And that's important for the evaluation. Um, so I was looking at the, this method, the, the methods and I, I was still not totally confident that, uh, about what they were evaluating here, but based on my best understanding, um, they basically ran the, the whole pipeline with default settings, um, with, uh, the four different methods that I discussed for into cell assignment. Um, and then they called cell types and based on the, the classified cell types um, against the pathologist annotations, they could evaluate the performance. Um, so they use these three methods that are pretty common in machine learning. Um, and um, so this is just the Xenium data set we'll start with. Um, so I, I guess just as like a brief recap, um, if you haven't seen these metrics, um, for like a, a cell type classifier, um, recall would be like the ability for the, the model to, um, to correctly classify or to, I, I guess, identify, um, I always get these mixed up, so I'm trying to <laughs> remember. Um, recall is the ability to sort of detect a true positive or a, to detect a particular cell type when it's there. Um, precision would be like the, um, when the cell type is, there, are you calling it correctly? Is I believe it's, I might have switched them, but I think that's right. Um, so the precision is generally a little bit better um, with the, the whole cell segmentation. Um, um, and basically the idea here is that um, they make a point that like the recall is a bit lower. Um, and the reason for that is basically um, we're, um, sorry, I guess specifically, I'm really talking about like the na naive method is doing worse, a lot worse in recall, even though its precision is pretty good. And the reason for that is that they argue is that like, sure, it's, um, it's classifying correctly when the cells are there, but it's, it's missing this information loss, um, by, since we're dropping bins that have multiple cells. So, um, it's not detecting all the, the cell types that are actually uh, correctly that, that are actually there, if that makes sense. Um, so, I mean, in summary, the recall is lower because of information loss due to the, the dropping of certain bins, um, whereas the bins that are actually there, it's doing um, better at. Um, and so I guess I didn't discuss the F1 score. So the F1 score is a um, score that's intended to sort of um, summarize both precision and recall into one metric. Um, and so I guess as a whole, um, like the weight by area method, despite the fact that they weight by transcript and weight by cluster are supposed to be sort of more, um, more sophisticated methods, the weight by area is really doing, um, best here, interestingly enough. Um, and so that, that was one of the reasons that they, um, use that as the default, um, in the, the package. Um, so I guess I should also mention that, um, like I think I believe the segmentations from the pathologists were, or sorry, the cells um, from the reference were entire cells, whereas like Stardust gives segments nuclei. Um, so they have like different sort of levels um, for the segmentations that they can compare against for the senior data set. Um, but I guess the similar a similar takeaway from both, where you have weight by area being better um, or best, I mean. Um, 
So similarly, um, they, have, they did the same metrics on this seek fish plus data set. Um, and the, the plot, I mean, of course, the plot is a skewed a lot higher here. So like really, um, I mean, even though the naive method is doing worse in terms of recall um, and F1 score as a consequence, um, they're all pretty high. And the reason for they um, talked about for this is that the cells were extremely large. There, there, were, there was at least one cell type that was extremely large here. Um, I think in general, the cells may have been larger, but based on the tissue that was um, like the, the source of the, the tissue. Um, and so in that case, like there's less bin, a lower proportion of bins that have um, like multiple cells and therefore there's less benefit to using the more sophisticated methods starting with weight by area. Um, and so they argue also another point that they make is like, in this case, if you have really large cells, um, you might as well just run the naive method. It's, it's pretty much just as good um, and it's a lot faster. Uh, so that brings me to the, the next point here. Um, so all of this, by the way, yeah, this is all stuff that, um, if you took a look at the paper, it's like all on the supplement. Um, but there's a lot of good content here. Um, so, um, here was, they were just evaluating the runtime for, this is actually per patch. So, right. I mentioned that the segmentation was done in patches. Um, and they said this was about, if I recall correctly, it's just about 10,000 cells per, per patch. Um, so this is the runtime in seconds. Uh, I know the axis is a bit small here, but um, of course, as you would expect, the simpler methods um, are take less time to run. Um, so, like I said, like the, I mean, from a relative sense, the weight by area is actually still pretty low. Um, not, I forget the. I should have um, probably memorized like the, the factor that was. Like how much more does it take to do the weight by area than the naive? I don't remember that off the top of my head. Um, but in any case, like those are still much faster than the weight by transcript and cluster methods. Um, and so, yeah, another argument for weight by area as the default. Um, um, so I guess I didn't provide too much background here, but. Um, Oh, those are the numbers. Okay, I see in the chat that Leo gave the numbers for the time. Um, so yeah, weight by area is like doubly, takes double the time by that information. Um, and then weight by transcript and cluster are much higher as you can see by the, the plot. Uh, so yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for providing those numbers. Um, so in addition to just looking at which met, like bin cell method is best, they also, I mentioned that they have three different, or I didn't say three, but they have multiple different um, cell annotation methods for calling cell types after the segmentation is performed. Um, unfortunately, they didn't have, they had uh, some individual plots, but no summary plot that sort of covers all this information. So, but they did have it in table format. So I'll try to walk through that. Um, so again, this was um, it's running the whole pipeline basically. Um, segmentation, then calling cell types, and then comparing against the pathologist annotations. Um, and so they uh, they also include accuracy here as a metric. But um, normally, when you have like multiple um, cell type classes, you want want to use other metrics like precision recall and F one score. Um, any case, uh, I guess some big takeaways are that Sargent um, was really performing. Um, the best against the pathologist annotations um, in terms of pretty much any metric you look at. Um, and also something I found interesting was that the cell annotation method actually makes a bigger difference than the bin to cell method here. So like the, the variation within or across bin to cell methods for a, for a given cell annotation method is smaller than the variation across cell annotation methods. Um, so I guess it's pretty much it's I guess they say pick sergeant in general that that's um, the default, um, and um, yeah again like um, weight by area is doing um, well here within sergeant um, um, across all the metrics. Um, um, so next, 
they they wanted to to um, sort of measure the performance of the pipeline as a whole, um, not really comparing cell annotation methods or the segmentation methods. Um, so what they did, the pathologists also annotated regions. So not not individual cells, but sort of um, interesting um, landmarks, they called them. Um, and so um, once they got the cell type calls um, from running the ENACT pipeline, um, they could sort of look at the, um, like if those cell types looked reasonable based on the, the, the landmark. Um, so this is the human colorectal cancer sample. Um, and so they, they listed a bunch of cell types that were called from the pipeline. Um, I think these were the predicted ones, not the pathologist annotation um, on, on panel A here. Um, and panel B, um, sorry, the labels were a bit small on these plots. Um, but panel B is uh, the, um, the sort of distribution of cell types that were predicted within muscle tissue. The, what was annotated as muscle. Um, so like the most common tissue here, uh, I guess I should move this people here, um, is um, smooth muscle cells. So like, of course, this, these are intuitive findings. Um, the next one was unclassified. Um, they make the point that all of these methods that they evaluated are, um, they're not forced to call one of the cell types that in, in the model. Um, so they actually do have an option to say, like, I don't know what cell type this is, um, which actually is a bit, they say it's a bit of an advantage, which I, I agree with, um, in that, like, you're not limited to the cell types in the reference, um, and it, like, um, it's not forcing, it's not trying to forcefully classify something just because there's not enough cell types in the reference. That could, that, that could be a risk. Uh, in any case, it's pretty high. I mean, I, I found it, like, pretty high. Um, but I guess the, the broad takeaway here is that like um, the must, the predicted cell types by the ENACT pipeline were concordant with the pathologist's um, annotation based on the landmarks that they gave. Um, and so um, they did this, um, this evaluation for both of the synthetic physium data sets. Um, so this is the mouse, mouse small intestine tissue. Very similarly, um, we have predicted cell types um, and I, I did some, I did the same, I took the same, um, bar graph here. Um, so again, um, in the areas that were annotated as muscle tissue by the pathologist, um, smooth muscle cells were like the first predicted cell type that were, was there again, unclassified as next. Um, but, um, this was just one of their ways to quantify that. Like, are we getting sensible results? Like once we run the entire pipeline, not looking at individual components, are we getting sensible results based on the ground truth that we have for these two um, synthetic data sets? And so the overall takeaway was yes, yeah, we're getting, um, these are reasonable cell types that we'd expect to be in the tissue. Um, and they, in this, the actual supplement, they had, a, they had a lot more of these bar graphs and then they had an exact um, description of how like the cell types that were um, in the reference mapped to, um, the pathologist annotations. So sometimes they had to make like subcategories. Like sometimes the predictions were like sort of finer cell types than the, the reference and things like that. Um, but yeah, this is the broad takeaway here. Um, so I also um, want to talk about a related paper because I think this is it's a natural question. If you've seen the bin to cell paper, which does something similar, I mean at, like its name suggests, bin to cell is another method for um, taking, using segmentations and um, trying to get your bin level data into the cell level. Um, so I wanted to just, like briefly compare. Um, I mean, in the um, ENACT paper, they say bin to cell was sort of like the naive method, but I think it's it's not quite. I would say there's some more details that they were missing. So I just want to explain um, for those of you who have not seen this. Um, a little bit of how bin to cell works. Um, so in panel A here, um, this is sort of how um, it's more similar to the ENACT pipeline where we're looking at the H&E image. Um, in this case, it's downscaled, um, unlike the full resolution one done in patches in ENACT. But that, that's just like one difference. But um, 
panel A is otherwise similar where we're segmenting the H&E image um, with Stardust, actually, same exact tool um, to find nuclei. Um, so I guess another thing that bin cell does differently is it does this expansion to try to find the cell body. Um, so that's one thing that they didn't mention and maybe could be an advantage. Um, the other thing that might be a big advantage for bin cell um, that they, um, despite it's like um, otherwise less sophisticated like method for distributing the bins, um, was that they actually form this, um, I'm looking at panel B here, um, and they take the um, gene expression and they actually rasterize that into a image, a fluorescent like image based on the, um, just the magnitude of the gene expression total, I believe. Um, and then they use their fluorescent muscle, or sorry, a fluorescent model from Stardust to segment that. So um, instead of looking at the eight, like looking at a, a real image to find nuclei, it's looking at a generated image that's really segmenting gene expression. Um, so I think that's like one possible advantage that the Enact pipeline didn't really address. Um, so you could um, find cells that were not really covered well by the nuclei, um, but are evident based on the expression. Um, so that's what they called secondary in this, um, the secondary method in this panel. So um, yeah, it's, I think Enact was sort of, um, I think almost advertises an improvement over bin to sell. And I think it is in some ways, but I think it was still interesting to like, I wonder if it's possible to combine. I think this, this secondary strategy by bin to sell is still probably useful, especially for really abnormal like shaped cells. Um, so I wonder if there's like a way to combine these two things. And I still see utility from bin to sell. Um, um, yeah, I guess I can also briefly look at the um the the repo here so um this was a python i discussed how this is like a python package um i haven't actually tried running it um it seems easy to install they, they provide different methods but like you can install it just with pip it's pretty straightforward um other things i was seeing in here is that i mean the documentation seems pretty good um they show different parameters. They show the exact structure of the output files. Um, and then um, I believe in one of these sections, they actually show exactly how to replicate the findings in the paper. I can't exactly recall where, but um, it's pretty extensive reproducing paper results. So they have a whole section on this. Um, and um, I guess no link to where the supplementary data is and stuff. Um, but it, it's like pretty thorough, which I, I find pretty impressive to start. Um, and so it, it seems promising to start running. Um, haven't done it, but, uh, looks like this will be, um, uh, straightforward to, to get running once we look at this. Um, but yeah, um, that's all I have.